Hello and welcome back. Our project currently has a nice image grid display, but we need to pull the application together with a nav bar and the search feature. So let's take a look at what we'll be building. This is what we currently have. Let me go to the next tab and we can preview what we're going to build. It's essentially the same thing, but you see the nav bar across the top. And our heading here links back to the home page. If we're not on the home page, we have a search bar here, and the search bar will work, which we'll display in just a moment. But let me open DevTools, and we can also resize this window to see how the nav bar resizes as our columns resize. So as we make this narrow, we get down to two columns, and suddenly the nav bar is going to switch here with the heading on top of the search bar. And that happens at about 640 pixels, which is the small break point in Tailwind, and we can size it down to even one column, and we get fairly small here. I've got a few phone displays in my dev tools, and you should as well, so you can check those out right here as responsive, but I'm going to go all the way down to the Galaxy Fold, which is very narrow. That's 280 pixels wide it still looks good. So now we can switch to maybe the iPhone 5 SE, which is 320 pixels, also a very small phone in comparison to some of the others. Here's a 678 plus. We can even go over to a Nest Hub and look at that view. So our image gallery looks good in all of these screens. I'll switch back to responsive, widen this back out, Let's go ahead and check out the search option and I'll search for puppies once again. We should bring up some puppy images and we can also check the tab at the very top now says results for puppies. So we're changing the SEO with our search results as well. So let's get into building this. In VS Code, let's go to our components directory and create a new component for the navbar. We'll call this navbar.tsx. Inside of the navbar.tsx file, we need to import links so we can link that heading back to the home page. So that comes from next slash link. After that, let's go ahead and create our component. I've got ES7 snippets installed, so I can just type RFC and press tab for a React functional component that just gives me a quick outline. So I've got export default function, navbar, and the return. I'll change what's inside the return. I'm going to start with a header. And now inside the header, we're going to have the nav element. And then inside of the nav element, we're going to have an H1. And inside of the H1 is where we'll put that link. And the href will equal the slash. So it's just linking back to the home page. Here's where we'll put our title. So next JS image gallery. And what's currently missing then are the Tailwind classes, which I want to apply. I like to actually apply those and have you see them applied at the same time, but it's a struggle really to get the font large enough here to squeeze that in and actually see a good image of the gallery. So I'm just going to kind of toggle back and forth as we add the classes. So here on the header, let's start with the class name set this equal to a background that is black. We'll also make it sticky so it stays at the top if we scroll the images, and therefore we need to put the top at the zero position, and we'll make the Z index Z-10 so the nav bar stays on top of the images. So I'll save that. Now let's look at our project. I already have it running, but I guess we haven't added it yet. So let me quickly add the nav bar to the layout as well. We need to go to the layout.tsx here inside the app directory, and then we're going to import the navbar. So we'll import navbar, comes from components navbar, and we'll put it right after the body and before the main tag. So navbar with the closing slash. And that's all we need. So now we should be able to go back and forth and see how this looks. We don't have much yet, but let's see what we do have. And we've got a very small nav bar right here at the top. We don't have a whole lot going on yet. So we're going to have to style even that heading we put in to be able to see it. Right now it probably has black font and it's probably really small. So let's go back to the code and add a few more Tailwind classes. The majority go on our nav element. So we'll have class name. Let's set that equal to flex. And it will start out as a flex column because we'll want that title to be on top of the search bar on those smallest screens. And we'll make the gap 
dash four there. Now at the small breakpoint, which is 640 pixels, we'll switch to flex row. So now the title and the search bar would be side by side. Also at that small breakpoint, we'll say justify dash between. So it will set those far left and far right. The title being on the left, search bar being on the right. I'm going to press Alt Z to wrap this down. So as we get to the end, we don't scroll. And now after that, I'm also going to set items center and then padding four on our nav bar, font to bold, and then let's make the width match the rest of the image gallery, which was max-w-6xl. And we can see here in the IntelliSense that I have for Tailwind, if I scroll that, that's 1,152 pixels max width. Now, after we have that max width, we still need to go ahead and say mx-auto. So that's the left and the right margins set to auto, so it centers our content for the nav bar. And finally, we'll set the text to white. So let's save with those classes. We still have a few to apply, but let's see what it looks like now when we go back. And yep, there's our small title, Next.js Image Gallery, and it's lined up here so we know we have the margins and the width matching our image gallery as well. Let's make a few more changes in the code. We'll add a few classes to the H1. So class name equals, and inside of here we'll say the text is 2XL, but at the small breakpoint, let's make this text dash 3XL, so a little larger. Let's center the text inside of the H1, so when it gets centered, or on the smallest screens, when it is centered, it will look centered. And after that, we also want white space dash no wrap. So that will make it so our title doesn't say Next.js image on one line and have gallery underneath it. It will make it so these words don't wrap down to a second line. They'll all stay on the same line. Now we should be finished with our classes. Let's go back and once again look at our project. The Next.js image gallery title looks much better now. It's over to the far left, matches up here, and it is a link as well. And if we open up DevTools, we should be able to resize and see that all goes where we want it. And at the breakpoint, when we get to 640, it should be centered. And yes, it is. And the text got a little smaller. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay, it's time to start working on the search component. Once again, inside the components directory, we need to create a new component. I'm going to call this search.tsx. This will be the first client component that we have created for our Next.js image gallery project. So we need to put use client at the top. The way I view client components are islands of interactivity that are nested inside our server components. I never make a full page just the client component. I'm always going to have a server component parent. I'm only going to put the client components where I need that interactivity. Now this is basically pure React when we write a client component. So I'm going to import use state. And not a use state snippet though. I don't know why it says that, but let me see. No, I don't think I want the snippet. So after use state, I'm, I'm actually going to need to put the brackets here and get it to cooperate. So after use state, I also want a form event. And both of those are just going to come from React. After that import, I also need to import use router. And this is going to come from next slash navigation. Okay, now that I've got both of those imports, let's create the function. So RFC, once again, tab over, and I've got export default function search. Now, before the return, I need to put in some other code logic here for this search component. And the first thing is to set up search. So I want search and set search for state. I'm going to set this equal to use state, and it'll just be an empty string for the opening value. Now I also need to define router. I'm going to set that equal to use router. After that, we need a handle submit function. So when we submit the form, which is our search input, we need to handle that. So I'm going to call this handle submit, and I'll set this equal to a function that receives the event, and this is going to be the form event that we imported, which is an HTML form event. Oh, I'm sorry, form element. That's where we get it from. There we go. Now, after that, put our arrow for our arrow function. 
And then inside of the function, we're going to say event.preventDefault because an HTML form naturally reloads the page every time, and we don't want that to happen by default. But that's what a submit does in an HTML form. And then we're going to say router.push, and we're going to send our search request. Actually, we need a template literal here to slash results, which we haven't created this path yet, but we will. And then we'll pass in the search term and we'll just call that search because it needs to match our state that we set here. Finally, after we push in that result, we'll set the state of the search back to empty because our nav bar is going to be on the top of every page. So we need to make that available to every page so it will still be there. We just need to clear out the search term after it has been submitted, whether the user presses enter or clicks a submit button, if we create one. I'm not so sure I even want to create a submit button. We might just work with enter. Okay, now let's put the form inside of the return. So we'll delete this div that's inside of there and we'll start creating our form. So we have the form element and then it's going to have an action, but we can remove that really because we're not going to use that. It is going to have a class name or two. So let's put our class names here. And for that, we need flex. It's also going to be justified center. And then at the medium breakpoint, we're going to put justify dash between. And that should be all the classes we need there. Oh, I don't need a space after the medium breakpoint. That's not good. Everything looks good now. So now inside of the form, we want to have an input and we'll put more with that input. But I just realized I left out the on submit for the form as well. So we need to have the on submit here. And this is going to equal handle submit. Now I'll press Alt Z to wrap this down. So now we've got the handle submit link to the form. We're ready to work with the input. I'm going to put each attribute on different lines. So we have text on one line. I'll put the closing slash on another. Now on the line after type, I'm going to set the value equal to search. So it's a controlled input. After that, we'll have the on change here that we handle. So here we're going to have an event. And then we'll have our arrow and we will set the search. And this will be e.target.value. Now let's go ahead and add a placeholder as well. So we just see what we're supposed to do here. And this is just going to say search. And after that, we need class names from Tailwind. So class names will have the background of white, which will stand out on the black background padding dash two. Now we'll use an arbitrary value for the first width. And to do that, we use brackets like an array, but we just pass in a set value. 260 pixels is what I'm going to do. So an arbitrary value in Tailwind is one that's not predefined. So we just put our W dash so it knows we're addressing the width and we're setting it to 260 pixels. After that, at the small breakpoint, I'll use width dash 80, which is a predefined value, and we can see that's 320 pixels. Okay, after the width 80, we'll put text dash XL, we'll say rounded dash XL, so we have rounded corners, and we'll set the text to black because the text was set to white for the rest of the nav bar. And with that, our search component looks complete. So now we're ready to import this into the nav bar. We'll just click on the nav bar file. We'll import it at the top with import search. And now we can put it inside of our nav element and it should respond as we expect it to since we already set up the proper values or the flex box when it is row and when it is column. So now let's once again go back and look at our project. And yes, we now have a search input right here as well. Now, if you try to use it right now, you should get an error because we haven't created that results path yet to handle the search results. In VS Code, let's highlight the app directory and let's create a new directory inside of it called results. Now inside the results directory, let's create another new directory and we need to wrap this in brackets like we would an array. And I'll just put term here because this will be our search term. And then inside of this new term directory, we need to create a page.tsx file. We'll start this file by importing gallery. And we've got that inside of app component slash gallery. And then after that, let's define our props. We'll set this equal to an object that has params 
and then the params object is going to have term, which is a string, because all of the URL params that you would pass in would be strings. Now, let's update that metadata as well. As we saw, we had results for puppies when we searched for puppies. So we can do that with our generate metadata function. I'll say export function generate metadata. Make sure you have the capital M and the lowercase d on data and the lowercase g on generate metadata. Now, this will receive the params. So we'll have our params here. And then inside of that, we'll destructure term. And then, of course, after that, we have, I guess, both of these. Then we need to put our props right there. If I spell props correctly. And now inside of this function, we're just going to return the title for the results page. So this will be title. And let me use a template literal. So I'll say results for. And then we'll just pass in the term. So that's how we should generate the title for our search results. And we'll see that on the tab of each of the pages that we would go to. So at the very top, as I pointed out in the example. Now I'm going to copy this line right here, line nine, just so I don't have to type the props again, because we'll have the exact same props for our next function. I just need to change generate metadata to search results. So it's going to receive the exact same params here with the term. And then inside of this function, we're just going to return gallery. But this is what we haven't set up yet. We're going to need to modify our gallery component because it's going to receive a topic. And that topic will be whatever term was passed in. We could probably actually call that term instead of topic if you want to. But that's what I've got. So that's what I'm going with. So now, so we don't see a red squiggly here, let's go to our gallery component and make some updates so it can actually receive that prop as an optional prop. So underneath all of our imports here, let's start with type props, set this equal to our object. It's going to be topic, but it's optional. So we need a question mark and then our colon. It's going to be string or undefined, so a union type. Now after this, we need to be able to pass that in. So here we're going to have topic, and then after that we will put our props. So now it can receive the topic. So what are we going to do with that? Well, if we search, this URL is not correct. We're just loading those curated images to start our application. So let's change this to a ternary statement. So I'm still going to have const URL, and now we need to check to see if we've received a topic. So what I'm going to do is put the exclamation mark topic. So if we do not have a topic or we have not received a topic, then after the question mark comes what the URL value will be. So this is the first half of the ternary. So if there is no topic, then, or if topic is basically undefined, then the URL will equal this. Otherwise, we do have a topic and the URL is going to equal something else. So I need to use a template literal here because we're going to insert that search topic. Now I'll copy this first and then we'll just modify it because the URL is very similar. So I'll put this inside the template literal. But after the V1, we need to change curated to search. Now we need to add the query param. So we'll put a question mark, the word query, say this equals, and now we can insert our topic. And that's the URL we'll want to use for their API if we have something to search for. Everything else in our gallery component should stay the same. So now we're able to use the same gallery component for search results that we do for the home page when we just get the curated results. So now let's go back to our application and see if everything's working like we expect it to. So here are our curated images that we have, and we've got those 15 images. Let's see if we can come up with 15 images of pizza now. So we searched, and no, we do have a problem. I think I forgot to go back and go ahead and update that topic inside of our search. Let's check that. Was it the search page? Or no, it's actually the page.tsx. Here we go. So we've got topic and term. That actually looks okay. I know what I left out though. I left out the default. This needs to be the export default function search results. So now with that, we should be much better off. Let's go back. May have to reload the application. No, it's already loaded up our pizza. And at the top, we see results for pizza. 
That's what we wanted. Let's go ahead and click this link to go back to the main page. Here we've got our curated images again. We can search for something else. Let's look for corn. It's summertime here in Kansas. There's always some good corn in the fields. There we go. So now we've got corn as well. How about something with another bright color like, uh, I think, tomatoes. Yep, there's some bright red tomatoes. Our image search feature is working well. One final addition today, I am back in the layout.tsx file. Underneath our imports, I want to add a route segment config. And this is just going to be export const revalidate. And we'll set this equal to 3600, which is essentially one hour. Now what this does is it tells Next.js to revalidate everything after one hour. Now, if you know how revalidation works, it's essentially incremental static revalidation is what Next.js calls it. What happens is the first request after one hour gets the same results, the same cached results that we were getting before. But then after that, the next request will get the new results. So the first request tells Next.js to revalidate those fetch requests and go get new data so it's ready for the next time. And so that second request is what gets the new data. I'm going to drop this down to something like 10 seconds here because we've had those cached results for our home page. And if we left it the way it was, we would actually indefinitely have those cached results and you would always see the same images on the home page. But the Pexels API actually adds new images to that curated list several per day. So if we switch it to about every hour, it should work out to where we eventually see some new ones. Right now, let's see if we can go ahead and revalidate within 10 seconds and maybe get any new images on the home page when I go back to the home link. So I went back, we have the same images right now because when I click this link, it is soft navigation in Next.js. And that means it's using the front end cache to show us what it's already shown us before. So if I go ahead and reload the page once, then it should tell it, hey, I want to revalidate. Now let's see if we can possibly get results if I reload again. Now I'm in dev mode, so this doesn't always work the way you expect it to. If I would run a build, I could guarantee I would be checking that incremental static revalidation. But here it did work, so I'd waited 10 seconds. Remember, this was our first picture, but there have been six new pictures added since we had cached this as the first picture. So let's go ahead and change that back to one hour because 10 seconds is way too frequent. But I just want to leave that in there for the project so you occasionally get to see those new pictures load. At least every hour it would check if you reload at least one more time. Remember, the first time you request after the hour's up, you'll still get the same results. It's that second time after revalidation has been triggered that you will see the new results. And now in the next tutorial, we're going to go into an advanced image grid with Tailwind CSS, something a little different than what we currently have.